In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. O God, come to my assistance, O Lord, make haste to help me. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. <coughs> ah, holy Jesus, how hast thou offended that man to judge thee hath in hate pretended by foes derided, by thine own rejected, O oh, most afflicted, where was the guilty? Who brought this upon thee? Alas, my treason, Jesus hath undone thee. Twas I, Lord Jesus, I it was denied thee, I crucified thee, lo, the good shepherd, for the sheep is offered. The slave hath sinned, and the son hath suffered for man's atonement, while he nothing heedeth. God intercedeth for me, kind Jesus, was thine incarnation, thy mortal sorrow, and thy life's oblation, thy death of anguish and thy bitter passion for my salvation. Therefore, kind Jesus, since I cannot pay thee, I do adore thee and will ever pray thee. Think on thy pity and thy love unswerving, not my deserving. The Office of Readings in Tenebrae is taken from the Liturgy of the Hours, Volume 2, Lenten Season, Easter Season, Catholic Book Publishing, 1975, New York, New York, and from Roman Catholic Daily Missal, <coughs> 1962, published by Angelus Press. Kansas City, Missouri, 2004. And in the uh, breviary, the Liturgy of the Hours, page 467 and following. Come, let us worship Christ, the Son of God, who redeemed us with his blood. Antiphon 1. Earthly kings rise up in revolt. Princes conspire together against the Lord and his anointed. Psalm 2. Why this tumult among nations? Among peoples this useless murmuring? They arise, the kings of the earth. Princes plot against the Lord and his anointed. Come, let us break their fetters. Come, let us cast off their yoke. He who sits in the heavens laughs. The Lord is laughing them to scorn. Then he will speak in his anger. His rage will strike them with terror. It is I who have set up my king on Zion, my holy mountain. I will announce the decree of the Lord. The Lord said to me, you are my son. It is I who have begotten you this day. Ask and I shall bequeath you the nations. Put the ends of the earth in your possession. <clears throat> with a rod of iron you will break them. Shatter them like a potter's jar. Now, O kings, understand. Take warning, rulers of the earth. Serve the Lord with awe, and trembling pay him your homage. Lest he be angry and you perish, for suddenly his anger will blaze. Blessed are they who put their trust in God. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Antiphon 1. Earthly kings rise up in revolt. Princes conspire together against the Lord and his anointed. Antiphon 2. They divided my garments among them. They cast lots for my clothing. Psalm 22, verses 2 through 23. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? You are far from my plea and the cry of my distress. O my God, I call by day and you give no reply. I call by night and find no peace. Yet you, O God, are holy, enthroned to the praises of Israel. In you our fathers put their trust. 
they trusted and you set them free. When they cried to you, they escaped. In you they trusted and never in vain. But I am a worm and no man, scorned by men, despised by the people. All who see me deride me. They curl their lips, they toss their heads. He trusted in the Lord, let him save him. Let him release him, if this is his friend. Yes, it was you who took me from the womb, entrusted me to my mother's breast. To you I was committed from my birth. From my mother's womb you have been my God. Do not leave me alone in my distress. Come close, there is none other to help. Many bulls have surrounded me. Fierce bulls of Bashan close me in. Against me they open wide their jaws like lions rending and roaring. Like water I am poured out. Disjointed are all my bones. My heart has become like wax. It is melted within my breast. Parched as burnt clay is my throat. My tongue cleaves to my jaws. Many dogs have surrounded me. A band of the wicked beset me. They tear holes in my hands and my feet and lay me in the dust of death. I can count every one of my bones. These people stare at me and gloat. They divide my clothing among them. They cast lots for my robe. O oh Lord, do not leave me alone. My strength make haste to help me. Rescue my soul from the sword, my life from the grip of these dogs. Save my life from the jaws of these lions, my poor soul from the horns of these oxen. I will tell of your name to my brethren and praise you where they are assembled. They divided my garments among them. They cast lots for my clothing. They sought to take my life by violence. Lord, do not rebuke me in your anger. Do not punish me, Lord, in your rage. Psalm 38. O Lord, do not rebuke me in your anger. Do not punish me, Lord, in your rage. Your arrows have sunk deep in me. Your hand has come down upon me. Through your anger, all my body is sick. Through my sin, there is no health in my limbs. My guilt towers higher than my head. It is a weight too heavy to bear. My wounds are foul and festering, the result of my own folly. I am bowed and brought to my knees. I go mourning all the day long. All my frame burns with fever. All my body is sick, spent and utterly crushed. I cry aloud in anguish of heart. O oh Lord, you know all my longing. My groanings are not hidden from you. My heart throbs, my strength is spent. The very light is gone from my eyes. My friends avoid me like a leper. Those closest to me stand afar off. Those who plot against my life lay snares. Those who seek my ruin speak of harm, planning treachery all the day long. But I am like the deaf who cannot hear, like the dumb unable to speak. I am like a man who hears nothing and whose mouth is no defense. I count on you, O Lord. It is you, Lord God, who will answer. I pray, do not let them mock me, those who triumph if my foot should slip. For I am on the point of falling, and my pain is always before me. I confess that I am guilty, and my sin fills me with dismay. My wanted enemies are numberless, and my lying foes are many. They repay me evil for good and track and attack me for seeking what is right. O Lord, do not forsake me. My God, do not stay far off. Make haste and come to my help. O Lord, my God, my Savior. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning is now and will be forever. Amen. They sought to take my life by violence. They brought false evidence against me. They were breathing out fury. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Hebrew, a reading from the letter to the Hebrews, from the ninth chapter, the eleventh to the twenty-eighth verses. When Christ came as high priest of the good things which have come to be, he entered once for all into the sanctuary, passing through the greater 
and more perfect tabernacle not made by hands, that is not belonging to this creation. He entered not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood, and achieved eternal redemption. For if the blood of goats and bulls and the sprinkling of a heifer's ashes can sanctify those who are defiled, so that their flesh is cleansed, how much more will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself up unblemished to God, cleanse our consciences from dead works to worship the living God. This is why he is a mediator of a new covenant. Since his death has taken place for deliverance from transgressions committed under the first covenant, those who are called may receive the promised eternal inheritance. Where there is a testament, it is necessary that the death of the testator be confirmed. For a testament comes into force only in the case of death. It has no force while the testator is alive. Hence, not even the first covenant was inaugurated without blood. When Moses had read all the commandments of the law to the people, he took the blood of goats and calves together with water and crimson wool and hyssop and sprinkled the book at all the people, saying, This is the blood of the covenant which God has enjoined upon you. He also sprinkled the tabernacle and all the vessels of worship with blood. According to the law, almost everything is purified by blood, and without the shedding of blood there is no forgiveness. It was necessary that the copies of the heavenly models be purified in this way. But the heavenly realities themselves call for better sacrifice. For Christ did not enter into a sanctuary made by hands, a mere copy of the true one. He entered heaven itself, that he might appear before God now on our behalf. Not that he might offer himself there again and again as the high priest enters year after year into the sanctuary with blood that is not his own. If that was so, he would have had to suffer death over and over from the creation of the world. But now he has appeared at the end of the ages to take away sins once for all by his sacrifice, just as it is appointed that men die once and after death be judged. So Christ was offered up once to take away the sins of many. He will appear a second time, not to take away sin, but to bring salvation to those who eagerly await him. Response to read, Isaiah 53, 7 and 12. He was led to a, like a lamb to the slaughter. No complaint was from his lips against the evil done to him. He was given up to death to give his people life. He surrendered himself to death and was counted among the wicked. He was given up to death to give his pee, to give his people life. From the Catechesis of St. John Chrysostom Bishop, Catechesis 3, 13-19. The power of Christ's blood. If we wish to understand the power of Christ's blood, we should go back to the ancient account of its prefiguration. In Egypt, sacrifice a lamb without blemish, commanded Moses, and sprinkle its blood on your doors. If we were to ask him what he meant, and how the blood of an irrational beast could possibly save men endowed with reason, his answer would be that the saving power lies not in the blood itself, but in the fact that it is a sign of the Lord's blood. In those days, when the destroying angel saw the blood on the doors, he did not dare to enter. So how much less will the devil approach now when he sees not that figurative blood on the doors, but the true blood on the lips of believers, the doors of the temple of Christ. If you desire further proof of the power of this blood, remember where it came from, how it ran down from the cross, flowing from the Master's side. The Gospel records that when Christ was dead, but still 
hung on the cross, a soldier came and pierced his side with a lance, and immediately they poured out water and blood. Now, the water was a symbol of baptism, and the blood of the Holy Eucharist. The soldier pierced the Lord's side. He breached the wall of the sacred temple, and I have found the treasure and made it my own. So also with the lamb, the Jews sacrificed the victim, and I have been saved by him. There flowed from his side water and blood. Beloved, do not pass over this mystery without thought. It has yet another hidden meaning, which I will explain to you. I said that water and blood symbolize baptism and the Holy Eucharist. From these two sacraments, the church is born. From baptism, the cleansing water that gives rebirth and renewal to the Holy Spirit, and from the Holy Eucharist. Since the symbols of baptism and the Eucharist flowed from his side, it was from his side that Christ fashioned the cross, as he had fashioned Eve from the side of Adam. Moses gave a hint of this when he tells the story of the first man and makes him exclaim, Bone from my bones and flesh from my flesh. As God then took a rib from Adam's side to fashion a woman, so Christ has given us blood and water from his side to fashion the church. God took the rib when Adam was in the deep sleep, and in the same way Christ gave us the blood and water after his own death. <coughs> Do you understand then how Christ has united his bride to himself and what food he gives us all to eat? By one and the same food we are brought both into being and nourished. As a woman nourished her child with her own blood and milk, so does Christ unceasingly nourish us with his own blood, those to whom he himself has given life. The price of your redemption was not something of fleeting value like gold or silver, but the costly shedding of the blood of Christ, the Lamb without blemish, through him and in the one spirit, we can approach the Father. The blood of Jesus Christ washes away all our sins. Through him in one spirit we can approach the Father. Father, look with love upon your people. The love which our Lord Jesus Christ showed us when he delivered himself to evil men and suffered the agony of the cross. For he lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. A reading from the book of Hosea, the prophet Hosea, the sixth chapter, the first through the sixth verses. Thus says the Lord, in their affliction they will rise early to, and come to me. Come, let us return to the Lord, for he has taken us and he will heal us. He will strike and he will cure us. He will revive us after two days and on the third day he will raise us up and we shall live in his sight. We shall know and we shall follow on what we may know the Lord. 
His going forth is prepared as the morning light, and he will come to us as the early and latter rain on the earth. What shall I do to you, O Ephraim, and what shall I do to you, O Judah? Your mercy is like a morning cloud and like dew that goes away in the morning. For this reason, I have hewed them by the prophets. I have slain them by the word of my mouth. And, thy, and your judgment shall go forth as the light. For I desired mercy and not sacrifice and the knowledge of God more than holocausts. O oh Lord, I have heard your prophecies, and I was afraid. I considered your works, and I trembled. In the midst of two animals you shall be made known. When the year shall draw near, you shall be known. When the time shall come, you shall be shown. In the time when my soul was troubled, in anger you shall be mindful of mercy. God shall come from Lebanon, and the Holy One from the shady and thickly covered mountain. Covered are the heavens with his glory, and with his praise the earth is filled. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, <coughs> is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. <coughs> A reading from the Lamentations of the Prophet Jeremiah. The Lord has purposed to destroy the wall of the daughter of Zion. He has stretched out his line and has not withdrawn his hand from destroying. And the bulwark has mourned and the wall has been destroyed together. Teth, her gates are sunk into the ground. He has destroyed and broken her bars. Her king and her princes are among the Gentiles. The law is no more and her prophets have found no vision from the Lord. Yod, the ancients of the daughter of Zion, sit upon the ground. They have held their peace. They have sprinkled their heads with dust. They are girded with hair cloth. The virgins of Jerusalem hang down their heads to the ground. Kaf, my eyes have failed with weeping. My bowels are troubled. My liver is poured out on the earth for the destruction of the daughter of my people. When the children and the infants fainted away in the streets of the city, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, be converted unto the Lord thy God. All my friends have forsaken me. They lay ambush for me, and they have prevailed. He whom I loved has betrayed me. And with fierce looks they have cruelly struck me and given me vinegar to drink. They have cast me out among the wicked, and they have not spared my life. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. A reading from the Book of Lamentations. Lamed, to their mothers they said, where is corn and wine, when they fainted away as the wounded in the streets of the city, when they breathed their souls into the bosom of their mothers. Mem, to what shall I compare thee, or to what shall I liken thee, O daughter of Jerusalem? To what shall I equal you? that I may comfort you, O virgin daughter of Zion, for great as the sea is your destruction, who can heal you? Nun, your prophets have seen false and foolish things for you, and have not laid open 
your iniquity to excite you <coughs> to penance, but they have seen for you false revelations and banishments. Samech, all that pass by the way have clapped their hands at you. They hissed and wagged their heads at the daughter of Zion, saying, Is this the city of perfect beauty, the joy of the whole earth? Jerusalem, Jerusalem, be, confer 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 be converted to the Lord your God. The veil of the temple was torn, and all the earth shook. The thief from the cross cried out, saying, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. The rocks were rent, and the graves opened, and there arose many bodies of the saints who, who were dead. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. A reading from the Book of Lamentations. I am a man who has seen the poverty by the rod of his indignation. He has led me and brought me into darkness and not into light. Against me only has he turned and turned again his hand all the day long. My skin and my flesh he has made old. He has broken my bones. He has built around about me He's compassed me about with gall and labor. He set me in dark places as they who are dead forever. He has built against me all sorts round about that I may not get out. He has made my fetter heavy. Yes, and when I've cried out and entreated, he has shut out my prayer. He has shut up my ways with square stones. He has turned my paths upside down. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, be converted unto the Lord your God. O oh, my chosen vineyard, I planted you. How you are turned to bitterness that you should crucify me and release Barabbas. I have hedged you in and pick the stones out of you, and build up a tower. How have you betrayed me? Turn to bitterness, that you should crucify me and release Barabbas. They use violence that sought my soul. My people, what have I done to you? My people, what have I done to you? Or in what way have I abandoned you? Answer me. For your sake I scourged the land of Egypt with your firstborn. Uh, but you have handed me over to be scourged in blood. My people, what have I done to you? My people, what have I done to you? Or in what way have I offended you? Answer me. I led you out of Egypt drowning Pharaoh in the Red Sea. But you have handed me over to the chief priests. My people, what have I done to you? My people, what have I done to you? Or in what way have I offended you? Answer me. 
I open the sea before you, but with the spear you opened my side. I went before you in a pillar of cloud, and you have led me to the court of Pilate. My people, what have I done to you? My people, what have I done to you? Or in what way have I offended you? Answer me. <coughs> I rain manner on you in the desert, but you rain blows and scourges on me. From the rock I gave you wholesome water to drink, but you give me drink of gall and vinegar. My people, what have I done to you? My people, what have I done to you? Or in what way have I offended you? Answer me. For your sake I struck the Canaanite kings, and with a reed you strike my head. I gave you a royal scepter, and you have given me a crown of thorns. My people, what have I done to you? My people, what have I done to you? Or in what way have I offended you? Answer me. I raised you up with great power, but you have raised me up on a cross. My people, what have I done to you? My people, what have I done to you? Or in what way have I offended you? Answer me. A reading from the Tractate of St. Augustine, Bishop, on the Psalms, on Psalm 63. You have protected me, O God, from the assembly of the wicked, from the multitude of those who work iniquity. Now look at him who is our head. Many martyrs endured similar sufferings, but nothing shines out like the head of the martyrs. In him shall we better see what they endured. He was protected from the multitude of the wicked. That is, God protected himself, the Son, and the man assumed by the Son, protected his own flesh, for he is Son of Man and Son of God. Son of God because he's of the form of God. Son of man because he's of the form of a servant. Having it in his power to lay down his life and to take it up again. What could his enemies do to him? They slew his body but could not slay his soul. Mark that. For it would have been but little had the Lord only exhorted the martyrs by word and not also strengthened them by example. You have come against me as against a thief with swords and clubs to take me. I was daily with you in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me. And behold, even after I had been scourged, you led me off to be crucified. And when they laid hands on Jesus and taken him, he said to them, I was daily with you in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me. From the Tractate of Holy of St. Augustine, Bishop, on Psalm 63. You know what the assembly was of the wicked Jews, and what was that multitude of them that worked iniquity? What iniquity? That of devising to kill the Lord Jesus Christ. I have done, he says, so many good works among you. For which of them will you kill me? 
He bore with all their weaknesses. He healed all their sick. He preached the kingdom of heaven. And though he did not pass over their vices, they should have hated those vices. Not the physician who healed them, but they, without gratitude for all these cures, like men raving in a high fever, did rage against the physician who had come to cure them and conspired to destroy him, as if wishing thereby to prove whether he was indeed a man that could die or whether he was something above men and would not die. We recognize their words in the wisdom of Solomon. Let us condemn him, they say, to a most shameful death. Let us examine him. Let us look into his words. For if he be truly the Son of God, God will deliver him. Darkness covered the earth while we crucified Jesus. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And bowing his head, he gave up his spirit. Jesus, crying in a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. And bowing his head, he gave up his spirit. From the Tractate on the Psalms by St. Augustine on Psalm 63. They sharpened their tongues like a sword. Let them not say, we slew, we did not slay the Christ. Since it was with the purpose of appearing guiltless of his death that they delivered him up to Pilate for judgment. For when Pilate said to them, put him to death, they answered, it is not lawful for us to put any man to death. Thus they tried to throw the injustice of their crime on a human judge, but they did not deceive the judge that is God. By the very fact of doing what he did, Pilate became a sharer in their crime, but compared with them he was less guilty. For he did all he could to deliver the Lord out of their hands, and with that view scourged him and brought him forth to the people. Not by way of persecution did Pilate scourge the Lord, but to satisfy their fury, hoping that when they had seen him scourge, they would soften it and give up desiring his death. He did all this, but when they still persisted, you know, that he washed his hands, saying that putting the Lord to death was no doing of his and that he was innocent of his blood, and yet it was his doing. And if guilty for doing what he did, are they without guilt who forced him to do so? By no means. As it was he who pronounced sentence and ordered Christ to be crucified, he too may be said to have slain him. But you too have slain him. And how did you slay him? by the sword of your tongues, for you sharpened your tongues and you smote him and you cried out, crucify him, crucify him. I delivered the soul I loved into the hands of the wicked and my inheritance has become to me like a lion in the forest. My adversary invade against me saying, gather together and make haste to devour him. They place me in a lonely desert and all the earth mourn for me because there was none that would know me and do well. Men without mercy rose against me and did not spare my life because there was none to help me. I delivered my soul to death from them who rise up against me, deliver me, O Lord, for they have seized my life. From a letter, the letter of St. Paul to the Hebrews, 4. Chapter 4. Let us hasten, therefore, to enter into that rest, 
lest any man fall into the same example of unbelief. For the word of God is living and effectual, and more piercing than any two-edged sword, and reaching into the division of the soul and the spirit, of the joints also and the marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Neither is there any creature invisible in his sight, but all things are naked and open to the eyes of him to whom our speech is. For we have a great high priest who has passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. And let us then hold fast to our confession. For we have not a high priest who cannot have compassion on our infirmities. But one who is tempted in all things like we are, but without sin. They delivered me into the hands of the impious and cast me out among the wicked. They did not spare my life. The mighty gathered together against me, and like giants stood against me. Strangers rose against me. The mighty sought my life. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. From the letter of St. Paul, to, uh, no, from the letter to the Hebrews, 4, chapter 4. Let us therefore go with confidence to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace in seasonable aid. For every high priest taken from among men is appointed for men in the things that appertain to God, that he may offer up gifts and sacrifices for sins. Who can have compassion on them? that are ignorant, and who err, because he himself also is compassed with infirmity, and therefore he should, as for the people, offer also for himself for sins. An impious man betrayed Jesus to the chief priests and elders of the people, but Peter followed him for far to who see the end. And they led him to Caiaphas, the high priest, where the scribes and the Pharisees met together. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. From the letter to the Hebrews. Chapter 4. Neither does any man take the honor to himself of being priest, but he is called by God, as was Aaron. So also Christ did not glorify himself to be made high priest. But he who said to him, You are my son, this day I have begotten you. He says also in another place, You are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek who in the days of his flesh, offering up prayers and supplications with strong cries and tears to him who was able to save him from death. He was heard because of his reverence. And then, indeed, he was the Son of God. Yet he learned obedience by the things that he suffered. And being fulfilled... He became the cause of eternal salvation to all who obey him, called by God a high priest, according to the order of Melchizedek. Mine eyes are darkened by my tears, for he is far from me. He who comforted me, see all you people, if there be sorrow like my sorrow. All you who pass by, behold and see, is there sorrow like my sorrow. God did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all.
crux fidei his interromnes, aboruna nobilis, nulla silvatalem grofe, fronte flore germine, dulce lignum, dulce sclavos, dulce pondu sustines. Faithful cross, oh, tree all beauteous, tree all peerless and divine. Not a grove on earth can show such flower and leaf as thine. Sweet the nails, sweet the wood, laden with so sweet a load. Sing my tongue the glorious battle, sing the last, the dread affray. O'er the cross, the victor's trophy, sound the high triumphal lay. How the pains of death enduring, earth's redeemer won the day. When at length the appointed fullness of the sacred time was come. He was sent, the world's creator, from the Father's heavenly home, and he found in human fashion earth's redeemer won the day, offspring of a virgin's womb. Now the thirty years are ended, which on earth he will to see. Willingly he meets his passion, born to set his people free. On the cross the Lamb is lifted, there the sacrifice to be. There the nails, the spear, he suffers, vinegar and gall and reed. From his sacred body pierced, blood and water both proceed. Precious flood, which all creation from the stain of sin hath freed. Faithful cross, above all other, one and only noble tree. None in foliage, none in blossom, none in fruit thy peer may be. Sweet the wood, sweet the nails. And thy load, how sweet is he. Bend, O lofty tree, thy branches, thy too rigid sinews bend. And a while the stubborn hardness which thy birth bestowed suspends, and the limbs of heaven's high monarch gently on thine arms extend. Thou alone wast counted worthy this world's ransom to sustain, that a shipwrecked race forever might a port of refuge gain with the sacred blood anointed of the Lamb for sinners slain. Praise and honor to the Father, praise and honor to the Son, Praise and honor to the Spirit, ever three and ever one, one in might and one in glory, while eternal ages run. Hear, O Lord, my prayer and give ear to my supplication. In your truth, hear me in your justice. The one thief said to the other, We indeed receive the due reward of our deeds. But what has this man done? Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And they put over his head his accusation, 
writing, Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom.